up YouTube, TK here and today I'm here with Ray and we are building a foam machine. Now we have a leaf blower, we have a big old barrelly boy and we have a pump. We have been messing around all morning, mucking around with little proof of concepts, little baby prototypes and they're not good enough. I dropped the money on the big old pump, we're going to cut the roof off this barrel and get stuck in. Sound good? Alright, let's go. Let's do it! Ryan and I proceeded to have a fun but exhausting afternoon experimenting with the hardware. Try as we might, we couldn't actually get a decent amount of foam out of the rig. This was mostly because we were using a soap mix that was a factor of 10 too diluted. We had a 0.2% mix, we should have had a 2% mix. Regardless, we did learn a lot in the process however, and I went back to the drawing board and started from scratch. What up YouTube, TK here, and today I have a whiteboard that matches my shirt and we are building a foam machine. What's a foam machine? Well, if you've ever seen those foam parties they have in Thailand and Ibiza where they just get a hell of a lot of soap bubbles, blow them into a nightclub, that's nine tenths of what we're going for. Basically, we're going to make a machine that creates a hell of a lot of foam, we're going to fill the kitchen up, we're going to have a party, it's going to be awesome. So, how does that work? Well. Let me show you on the whiteboard and then we'll get stuck into building it. So here's our basic rig that makes up the foam machine. We have a 2% mixture of soap and water, which is pumped through a sprinkler fitting, which wets a cotton membrane. We then pass air through that membrane using a leaf blower. And at the end, we get lots and lots of fluffy, wonderful foam. It's pretty glorious. The prototype has worked pretty well so far. It's time to build the real thing. So we'll start with the hard part, which is the foam cone. Now here is the prototype, and we're gonna make a few small modifications, but it'll give you the basic idea. On the front here, we have an old t-shirt, which is made of cotton. This is our membrane, and uh, you can see it's a little worse for wear, but it does the job. We've just held this onto the front of the bucket with zip ties. So if we pull that off, we can see inside. So fundamentally, the body of the foam cone is just a bucket which I've modified with inlets for air and water. Now our air supply is from a old leaf blower. The problem with that is the air is very fast, very high volume, and it comes out of a very small orifice. We obviously want to make a lot of foam, and if you've ever blown bubbles before, you'll know that you can't blow too fast, you'll just blow the bubbles out. So we want to slow it down. So what I've done is, using my aerodynamics knowledge, instead of pointing the jet of air just straight out towards the membrane, instead, I've got it going through a 90 degree fitting towards the back of the bucket. That air is then forced to turn around, which does cause some pressure loss, but also just generally helps the flow to slow down and develop more quickly. If I just pass the flow straight at the membrane, it would probably take a foam cone approximately this long for the air to actually fully develop to this diameter and slow down properly. That's impractical, so instead I just did a dirty job. Turn the flow through 180 degrees, that'll sort her out. As for the water, it's a little difficult to see, but in the very bottom, I have a fitting that the water comes in through and there's a little sprinkler nozzle on the top of that which just helps atomize the water and helps it more evenly soak the membrane. This does make it a little bit of a pain to mount the foam cone anyway because you can't sit it on the bottom because there's a hose coming off it. We're gonna fix that by, in the next revision, we're gonna have the same setup for the air inlet but we're gonna put the nozzle on here pointing up towards the membrane and hopefully should be pretty good. We have here the bucket which will make up our foam cone and we need to drill a hole or cut a hole in the side to make room for the air inlet. Just marking that out. And then at the top, we want another extension to that for our water inlet to come in as well. We'll go ahead and cut that out with a Dremel because when I tried using the knife from the Voxwort video, I cracked the bucket and I didn't enjoy that at all. So the hole's a little bit big and it's quite ugly, but it will do the trick. So we'll cut our pipe to length, put in something here to just prop it up and uh, keep working on the foam cone. All right, we'll just check. Yes, that does indeed fit. And that will sit up off the bottom nicely. If we construct it properly, we then feed through our water line. We're using 13 millimeter irrigation pipe for the water. Uh, okay, 
that will go very nicely and we'll have that spraying up and out. Very good. So before we go further, I've got to make our sprinkler head. So we have a 13 millimeter barbed end cap here. We have a little uh, sprinkler nozzle for four millimeter irrigation systems. Just going to drill a hole, glue that in there with super glue. And that'll be our sprinkler head, which fits in the end of our 13 millimeter line. Excellent. That's going to screw in nicely. Just screw that in and we'll seal it up with a little tiny bit of soup glue around the threads. Not too much because we don't want to block the actual sprinkler itself. And that's our sprinkler head ready to go. We've just got a piece of scrap plastic here which we'll cut up to make a standoff for the pipe so that it doesn't sit on the bottom of the bucket. That is some horrible plastic. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? That is about perfect. That's a good standoff. So we'll glue that on. That'll be awesome. Bit of super glue to do the trick. If it'll stick. Sometimes various plastics don't actually work with super glue like at all. Um, hoping we don't have that problem with any of these. I suspect the bucket plastic, that feels like a low surface energy plastic that doesn't work well with regular super glue, but a uh, bit of super glue, bit of duct tape should get us done, to be honest. I'll start by roughing this up and then I'll do it again. Just creates more nooks and crannies for the glue to get into when you do that. And generally, makes your life easier. Oh, jeez. Getting glue everywhere. That's better. I always like to reinforce these kind of joints with a bit of paper or cardboard. All right, so the foam cone is coming along. We have our sprinkler spraying up towards the membrane. We have our air, which is going down, doing a 180, coming back up. If we glue all that in place, we should be pretty cushy. Uh, we just need to seal the side, which we'll do with a bit of glue, a bit of cardboard, and a bit of tape. Doesn't need to be perfect because the air doesn't really want to get out of there that much, uh, but it is better to have it sealed, definitely. All right, so we've just sealed that gap off with a bit of tape. It's quick and dirty because it is. Now we're just going to go ahead, fit the membrane on top. We're just going to stretch some cotton fabric over there with some zip ties under the lip, and we'll hook it up to water and air and see if it works. All right, so we're actually gonna use this microfiber cloth because that's just what I had lying around. Go ahead, fit a bunch of zip ties, and hopefully she's cushy. Now this is a new design, and I haven't actually tested this exact configuration, but I'm pretty confident it should work, and I've probably just jinxed it. Let's find out. So at this point, I should also tell you what we're using for the air supply to the foam cone. We're using a leaf blower because I got these for $5 each from a local pawn shop. So the way these work is they can either blow or they can suck and blast air out of here. So what we do is we take this front panel off, this, this big tube, and uh, it does come off. Here's one of the leaf blowers with the front taken off. We've got it configured in suck mode, which basically sucks air in the front, spits it out the bottom here. Normally you'd have your leaf bag attached here, but we obviously don't care about that. And we just go real quick and dirty with it. We stick this hose from an old pool pump, stick it on the bottom, wrap it in tape, and that's our air supply. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. If this looks dumb, it's because it is. But as we always say, if it's a dumb fix that works, it ain't a dumb fix. It's just a fix. So we'll feed this hose through this giant hole I put in the back of this cabinet. Thanks to Andrew for the cabinet, by the way, buddy. Uh, it's come in very handy. Probably not in the way you intended. Uh, so we'll feed that through, joggle that around. It's hopefully... Oh, not my best work. I want that off. Okay, so we've got them both jammed in here. The packaging isn't perfect, as you can see, but it should be good enough. 
don't really love that angle, but I think it's going to work. So I'm just going to plug in one at a time to make sure they both work, and then if they do, I'll tape up the outlet on the other side, pack it with foam, and that's our air supply cabinet, all nice and quiet, ready to go. Alright, checking one. <laughs> Operational, checking two. <laughs> Operational. Very good. Now that it's all working and packed in there, I'm going to pack it with this soundproofing foam. I am a little bit worried that if this all gets too hot, this could catch fire. So in operation, I'll be monitoring this pretty closely. This is not the kind of thing you build and leave unattended. It's all, you know, there's water, there's electricity, there's stuff stuffed in boxes that really shouldn't be. Um, when you're running something like this, you know, you don't do it with kids around, you don't leave it unattended at all. Um, but I think this is gonna be pretty okay, uh, as long as we keep an eye on it, and that's really the trick. You can do dangerous things if you do them carefully. That's, that's the key. So for the water side of things, this is what we're using. This is a cheap submersible pump. Costs us $70, the most expensive part of the build. Basically, we lower this into the bottom of our barrel with a rope, and it sucks in our 2% soapy water solution, which we've made with 250 litres of water and 5 litres of dishwashing detergent, and then it pumps it out through this garden hose here. It's also got a float sensor to make sure that it doesn't run when the barrel is empty. Fundamentally, it does a great job. This is how we get the water from the barrel through the sprinkle heads in the foam cones. Well hooked up, we've got a water feed here from a submersible pump inside this barrel. The barrel is full of a 2% soap and water mixture. We then have this air feed from a leaf blower which I've trapped inside that box full of sound absorbing foam. When we turn this on, the soapy water should flow through here, get sprayed onto the membrane and air should flow through here, down to the bottom, back up the top, making foam, delicious foam. So let's hope this works. <laughs> to fix but it's coming good all right it's slow but it's it's working keep in mind this foam mixture has been sitting there for uh, several weeks now so it's a little bit probably needs a bit of mixing but that's gonna work so the foam production here is a little bit too slow I think it's a combination of air getting out and also that water leak I'm going to tweak a couple things and see if performance improves at all because this just isn't quite good enough. I'm just going to overdose on the dishwashing liquid. I'm just running the pump on recirculate mode for a minute here. Oh jeez, making a mess. To, um, to churn everything up to make sure the foam mixture is nice and you know, the water in here and the soap are mixed up well because I'm not sure they were after sitting for a couple weeks. The problem is, I can't let this go. Oh, jeez. Alright. Alright, that should be enough. Round two. Fix the leaks. Fix the fluid. But other than that, she's working. We're definitely going to have to fix that air leak though. Now I've hooked up my original foam cone with the slightly different design with the sprayer in the base. And this one's sealed a little bit better. I've put on the microfiber membrane so it's a more direct comparison between this and the new one that I just showed you. We're going to see how this one goes on foam production. I want to know if the problem is the membrane or if it's the air leak in the new foam cone. <laughs> I think it's the air leak. I do think the cotton does a better job as well. Alright, we're going to switch back to a cotton membrane and see how that does. This performance is just woeful. Now we're still with the original design foam comb with the nozzle on the bottom, the black one, but we're going to try it with going back to a cotton membrane instead of that microfiber. I want to know why it's not doing as well as my prototype tests.
I want to know if it's due to air leaks or if it's the mixture or if it's the membrane. One of them. this membrane on the new foam cone and see if it does as well. I've got the new design foam cone with the cotton membrane on top, we're gonna to try it again. This is what you do with science, this is what you do with engineering. You try different combinations and you try to figure out which factors are important and which ones don't matter. Now this isn't very good science because for example, we don't know how that mixture in there is changing as we stir it up over and over again. We haven't really checked if that's a factor, but I'm just trying different things to try and see how to get the most foam production possible. So far it's been the old design foam cone with the cotton membrane. We're gonna try the new one now, see how it goes. better this foam cone still isn't as good but it's definitely better with the cotton membrane by a huge factor I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this foam cone and the old one I'm not gonna remake the old one because the old one's so good and uh, yeah we'll just run them like that that'll be awesome all right so uh, we got to keep going so it turns out probably my original design was best where we have the air coming in going 90 degrees down to the bottom and then in the bottom, that's where we have our spray nozzle. That, I think, is allowing the water and soap mixture to get all mixed up with the air nice and beautiful and make the maximum amount of foam. This design where I'm spraying directly onto the membrane just isn't as good, but it still does pretty well. I'm gonna lace both of these up on a frame. We're gonna move this whole contraption inside and we're gonna foam out the kitchen. And I think it's gonna be awesome. So, uh, time to get to work on that. All right, so I'm going real quick and dirty with the mounting for the foam cones. I tried a few different ideas. In the end, I want A, I want them as far away as possible from the air supply because I don't want foam and water getting into the electronics, electrics, whatever. Uh, as well, because I actually really like the performance of this foam cone, the original one with the bottom feed, I can't put them on a flat surface. So I'm hanging them from this. I think it's gonna be okay. We're gonna zip tie them off so they don't wobble around. But it should be awesome. I'm getting pretty excited. We're pretty close now. All we've got to do is hook up air and water feeds, um, tidy up a few little loose ends, finish cleaning out the kitchen, and we are ready to go. Okay, so we've got the foam cone in here, we've got the air supply, we've got the barrel and the pump. It's basically gonna be ready to switch on in the next couple minutes. I've got my heart, my throat. I don't know if it's gonna work. I bloody hope it does. Uh, we're just making the final preparations to make sure we don't burn the house down and electrocute everyone. Should be good. Get keen. Here we go. Firing up the pump, firing up the air. It's just, it's slow right now. So we're gonna 
We're going to unpack a little bit of the foam of the uh, the soundproofing and see how we go. Okay, so these are actually quite warm. I'm going to try running without the top soundproofing on. I'll still close the lid and we'll just see if that gets us better foam production. That's still not too bad from the sound perspective. Till next time, TK out!